Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Welcome to Redefining Medicine. Our special guest today is Dr. Sarah Zielsdorf. Dr. Z is a functional medicine specialist with a passion for helping patients who are struggling with chronic disease. We'll be back with our interview after this brief message from our sponsor. Hey there, listeners. It's your host of the weekly podcast, Redefining Medicine. I have a question for you. How much time do you spend ordering functional lab tests for your patients? Ordering from multiple lab companies for hundreds of patients can quickly turn into hours of admin time. But there's a new way to order lab tests that I'm excited to share with you. Rupa Health is a tool that lets you order 20 plus specialty labs in a single portal. You can order all tests you normally do from companies like Dutch, Vibrant, Genova, and Great Plains, and so many more. Imagine you're ordering a hormone panel for a patient that includes tests from three different labs, You have to log into three different websites to place separate orders and then come back weeks later to check tracking number and download results. Rupa eliminates all of that by having all ordering, tracking, and results in a single place. And they also handle invoices, tracking shipments, automated follow-ups, personalized instructions for completing tests, and so much more. The best part about Rupa, it's free for all practitioners. Go to rupahealth.com. Dot com. That's R-U-P-A health.com to join a live demo or sign up to see how it works. Now let's get back to today's show. I am so pleased to welcome Dr. Zielsdorf today, otherwise known as Dr. Z. As an autoimmune thyroid patient herself living with chronic illness, she started her private practice because she knew patients needed a true partner on their paths to healing. Welcome today. Thank you for having me. What a great mission you have. So can you please elaborate on what made you want to start this journey of health, wellness, and healing? I think the theme in my life has been, there kind of has been no choice. It's been a do or die situation really from birth. So um, if anybody could say, you know, what do you want to do? You know, I it, now that I'm in it and I've been doing this, I, I would say there are a million other easier things to do. But I, I had no choice. I was born um, with a, a birth defect that's not compatible with life. It has to be surgically or operated on. And so I was born premature. I had what's known as a tracheoesophageal fistula. So it means the trachea, the windpipe, and the esophagus, the food tube, were joined together. Um, and the stomach was not connected. And before the 1950s, no baby survived that in history. So. Uh, It was a relatively new surgical procedure um, that was still being perfected when I was born. And so I was premature, I was operated on, they didn't really expect me to survive, and I did, um, and have been working on my healing journey really since. Um, When I was four, I met the female surgeon that operated on me and that cemented it, I was gonna be a doctor. And so it was a constant thing in my life that I had this internal drive to succeed. And now that I have children, I see that in my daughter, and that's very difficult because she puts a lot of pressure on herself. And my parents never pressured me to do all the things that I did, but I had this internal drive to succeed. Always wanted to be a doctor, wanted to be an infectious disease specialist. Um, And then I got sick on the way. And how my practice of medicine really came to be was just realizing that there had to be a better way. And um, it's just been this journey of learning about healing via my own experiences and then following that with a lot of education tailored to the treatment of chronic illness and then practicing medicine as an attending which i did in private practice before starting my own um, my own private practice motivated medicine in 2019. wow that really is quite a journey i mean when you were four you decided you wanted to become a doctor i don't recommend that (laughs) You know, So basically, it really has been your life path. Yes. Um, so what have been some key takeaways from all the research you've done? Most doctors um, in the world actually are specialists. They train to be a cardiologist or a nephrologist or 
um, or an ortho orthopedist. And you know, I never felt like I owned an organ. Like I wanted to just look at hearts or just look at lungs or just look at bones um, or kidneys. I just couldn't, I couldn't fathom that because I was so interested in how everything worked together. And to do what I do, you have to be an amazing generalist. And so that's why I chose internal medicine as my field, um, because uh, I was passionate about um, adult medicine and, um, and chronic illness. And the whole time, even before I put the pieces together in my own life, I knew there had to be a better way of treating adults with chronic illness, because what we did didn't work. In my resident clinics, I could maybe help 10%. And now I can help 90 plus percent. It's amazing. That's so different. So one is really the interrelatedness of everything and how we have this siloization of medicine, which is so hard, where you are funneled through from your GP to go to a specialist, 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 who answers this one question. But that's not how the body works. And therefore, our chronic illness patients or patients with syndromes or concerns that don't exist they fall through the cracks and they have really mediocre care that also is traumatic, frankly, for them as they're funneling through all these specialists and being told it's in their head or being thrown a medication and nobody's talking to each other. So one, the interrelatedness of everything. Mm -hmm. Two, because I'm a microbiologist, I have been saying we are more microbial than human. So there are about 20,000 genes um, in, for, that are of human expression. But there are millions of genes that are expressed by our microbes in our gut and our body in general, between our oral microbiome and our gut. And it's kind of like the ocean or space. It's really the next generation of exp exploration, and we know almost nothing about it. And so a huge passion of mine is, um, is microbiome medicine, and it's really in its infancy. Um, thirdly is the interconnectedness of the brain and the gut and the microbiome. Um, it's a, it's a two-way street. And so many of our chronic illnesses are not being addressed um, from that way. Um, for instance, neurologists don't at all look at, uh, at gut function when we talk about diseases of neurodegeneration. Um, fourthly, um, I look at a lot of people and myself with autoimmune conditions, but endocrine issues. So blood sugar issues or dysglycemia, thyroid issues, adrenal issues, hormone issues. They are so profoundly complicated, but they're also all interrelated. You can't have health without balanced hormones. And, and the microbiome is involved in that. And nutrients are, and diet are part of that. And stress is part of that. And, and sleep is a huge part of that. And everything there is interrelated. And doctors don't look at that. Um, and then the final point I want to make is that all chronic illness is systemic inflammation. And if we do regular labs, some people hide their inflammation really well. And so in the last five or six years, I've just been so profoundly interested and surprised on a daily basis by finding these pieces that nobody is putting together and saying, ah, that's a huge driver in why you're so sick. Let's go after it. And that's so profoundly satisfying. So what would you recommend to someone to decrease inflammation just on a daily basis? The number one thing is what's on the end of your fork. So two things. So stress, stress mitigation. It's also perception of stress. So they've taken patients, women with fibromyalgia, and even if it's not a true stress in their life, their perception of their stress completely correlates with their pain levels. And so, Mind-body medicine is so huge, and I'm not talking about just talk therapy. The pandemic has been so hard on everyone. We've never had, you know, this is a, a global once in 100 year event. So we had 102 years since the last pandemic, major pandemic, the great influenza, 1918. Um, and we made it 102 years. Um, we've never experienced, you know, our generation has never experienced something like this, and it's affected everybody. And so the number one thing I can say is, stress mitigation, whatever it means for you, that leads to a more homeostatic basis of living. And then two is gonna be watching what you eat. And that's gonna be eating real food. Um, I can't put it in 
any simpler terms. Michael Pollan um, kind of said it. He said, eat food, mostly plants. But I, I really think it's got to be tailored to the individual, individual person, but balancing blood sugar and getting out refined sugar, getting out all of our toxic garbage in the United States, most of our food is not real food. So that's the most difficult aspect of it. And that was a huge part of my journey was learning how to eat real food mm -hmm. and um, really getting back to, you know, um, uh, an ancestral way of eating. And what's so interesting is there's not one ancestral way of eating. It's how you were meant to eat and figuring out how that works in your life. That makes sense because there are all these fad diets yes. and everything and it really, it, one probably doesn't just work and, for one person, I mean. And the second that you put a label on something, it becomes a religion, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm purposely not saying eat this way. I'm saying eat in a real way, in an intentional way, and following a lot of native traditions, you know, eating seasonally, eating what's, what's um, local to you, um, growing your own food or, you know, serving and, and, and uh, um, utilizing local farmers, CSAs. I, you know, really try to put my money where my mouth is in my local community, and that's been a journey too, and it's really satisfying to do that. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Z. It's really been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you again for having me, it was fun. <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm.